Triumph through transformation. What are we talking about? A, B, C, D, F, G. At the T, when we're talking at the point of T. Yes. We can be there. Transformation. That is necessary. How can we be transformed? My brother, my sister, we're looking at Romans 12. Romans 12 verse 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. Everybody say transformed. By the renewing of your mind. When you, then you will be able to test and approve what is God's will. His good, pleasing and perfect will. You call to be triumphant. You call to be an overcomer, my brother, my sister. But if the word does not bring a transformation in your life, nothing can happen. And transformation can only be through the Spirit of God. Where the Spirit and the Word is working together in you. The Spirit and the Word needs to work together in you. Like that one guy said, if it's only the Spirit, you will blow up. If it's only the Word, you will dry up. If it's the Word and the Spirit, you will grow up. Okay, remember that. Everybody say, blow up, dry up, grow up. May that be so for your life in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Why do we say, do not conform to the pattern of this world? What is the man saying there? You are so much more than what the world can give you. You know, there's so much more for you. You don't have to be on the level of the guy out there. But for you not to be on that level, but on a higher level, is for the Word to work in you. Because when the Word works in you, you have the thoughts, the feelings, the purposes of God in your spirit. You start to think like God is thinking. How is God, the, the Creator of heaven and earth thinking? You start to think the way that the Creator is thinking. The King of Kings. How is the, the Master thinking? What is His thoughts? Get beyond the thoughts of the world out there. And get into the place to start to think what he is thinking. Amen. And that is for you to be transformed. Transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because your carnal mind, your mind will just think out a lot of things. A lot of rubbish. A lot of good intentions. A lot of great ideas. But not a God idea. And it could be good at that moment. But it will have no eternal impact. May God help you. May God help you in Jesus' name. Let it be so. Guys, to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, you get the mind of Christ in this mind. Amen. But the transformation means it's not just information. Hell will bring the information of the word against you. The biggest first temptation that hell and Lucifer, Satan, could bring against the Son of God was the information of the word. And the devil said to Jesus, Oh, the word of God says. Oh, he's bringing the information. But Jesus, being the word himself, understood the context, the perspective of the word. Because there was a transformation. Hello? And he says, the word of God also says. And then again, the devil came with the information. My brother, my sister, if you're not going to deal with the word, with the spirit, there will be demons that will remind you of the word of God. But he will, the demons will give you the information of the word. Do you understand? If, if Satan thought he's going to, the best temptation to bring up against the son of God is the information of the word, he's definitely going to try it with you. The guy out there that says there's no God, many times they will quote the information of the word. They will tell you, you know, those guys that believe in this concept of Jesus. They say this, and the words say this. They, they words, they, 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 those Christians, they say this and this and this. And they can talk about the information. And they use the information to confirm and to try to convince somebody that there is no God. Satan brought the information. The snake said to Eve in the perfect world, Did God say, what did he, did God really say this? Let's look at the information of what was given through by God to you. And let's interpret it. Let's interpret it. Are you with me? And instead of the Holy Spirit reminding 
what God really meant with what he said. Eve and Adam took just the, their own interpretation of the information. Let's say interpretation of information. My brother, my sister, there's no, there's no victory for you. There's no victory for you. You cannot be triumphant. You cannot stand there with Jesus on, on the podium with a gold medal. You cannot stand with him there if there's not a transformation. In principle, Jesus, yes, he won. The victorious one, and you won't believe it, and you believe it. I know you believe it. The victorious one is living in you. Amen. And if you are in Christ, and Christ is in you, the victorious one over heaven and earth, the, the, the victorious one in you, and you in him. But still, you're not living in victory. What is the problem? There must be a transformation for you to be triumphant. Amen. And the way is through the cross. The way is only through the cross. Everybody do this. Just smack your neighbor when you do this. Like when you are hanging on the cross. And then from there, go like this. And... Okay, thank you. Now you can stop and fo try to focus again. Okay. This is, I am crucified with Christ. And I brag about nothing else except the cross of Christ. Paul says, I can boast about nothing except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. So if you have something to brag about, it's only in Christ, through the cross. Because through the cross, my brother, my sister, that's the victory. Some, some guys say... That scripture that, that he said that the authorities of, if they knew what's going to happen with the resurrection, they would not have crucified Christ. It's not the spiritual forces. It was talking about the physical. Because the spiritual forces had one agenda. He cannot die as the perfect lamb, as the perfect man, because then we are in trouble. It worked for us, the kingdom. The kingdom was given to us because we got um, a human being to cast, a human being to fall in sin, a human being that is not perfect. Hello. We won with Adam and Eve. We won with mankind. There cannot be a, somebody coming in the form of a man where we will lose in the deal. And lose is when Jesus would die and say, it is finished, the perfect man. That's the finishing line. That's the victory line. That's the victorious one. The resurrection was the promise of the Father. My son will not see. You can read all those scriptures there. But God said, you will not see decay. And he sent the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit raised him from the dead. That was the work of the Holy Spirit who is living in you. The Spirit that raised Christ from the dead is living in you. How much more then will he raise your mortal body into victory? Amen. That's what the scripture says. But the victory was through the cross. Your victory for you to be triumphant. For you to triumph. For you to be a victorious one. Is only through the cross into the death of myself, into the death of my own ideas, then, then there's triumph. If I conform to the pattern of this world, I'm the loser. You are the loser. You are the loser. The world, the world is the winner. And what hell can throw at you, they are the winner. But if you are transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you are the victorious one. Because when you have the thoughts of the victorious one, you are victorious. So the first point of victory is to get your mind in order. To bring order up here and order in here. So God in his new covenant said, this is the new covenant. I will write my thoughts, my will, my ideas, my way of thinking. I will write it in their heart and I will write it in their minds. That is transformation of the information into your life. That my thoughts will be transformed. There will be a transformation because Holy Spirit will take 
God's thoughts and bring a transformation in here that I will think the way that he thinks. And that is a powerful level of victory already. Amen. Amen. But then, if that happens, you will be able, you have the ability, let's say I have the ability. You will have the ability to test and approve. You will just know, you will know, this is God, this is not God. This is God, this is not God. This is hell wanting to make a fool out of you. This is your, the voice of your flesh. This is the way, voice of the world and where they will just tell you, you're like one of us. You are so much more. You are in this world, but you're not from this world. The word says, you are in this world, but you're not from this world. Understand that. Then you will be able to test and approve what is God's will. Triumph through transformation. If you want to have the victory, you must get into this place. What is God's will? What is His good, pleasing, and perfect will? His good will. What is the good will of God? I know I mustn't swear. I mustn't steal. I mustn't lust. I must not do this. I must not. That's the good. That's the good will of God. And many guys out there in the world actually know the good will of God. People that are not even Christians. And you can, but you can stay there and always struggle to do the good will of God, but never get into that what God really has for you. The world that is pleasing unto Him and the world that is perfect unto Him. But struggling with the first point, what is the will? Never mind knowing the pleasing, knowing the perfect, and then what to do with the good, pleasing, perfect will of God. What to do with it. That is where your life is really. But if at point one you still keep on struggling, and that's, that's part of our lives. Hello? In many areas we will still be there about what is the good will of God. And we struggle to... I mustn't lose my temper. I mustn't steal. I mustn't beat up that guy. I mustn't kill that guy. The guy in the world knows that also. Man, come on. And some of them can do the good will of God better than a lot of Christians. Ouch. God help us. Are you with me? But you can stay in that place and keep on struggling. But, or you can allow the Holy Spirit to bring a transformation in your life. Why did God say that but through the Holy Spirit? Not through what the devil will take and try and manipulate your life. No. You must get into the pleasing. What is pleasing? Oh, it was a good idea. We have Adam and Eve and then we have Cain and Abel. Hello? What did they do? They did, did, did something good. They brought an offering unto the Lord. But Cain brought... Something that was good. I mean, he wanted not to honor Satan. He didn't want to honor the flesh. He didn't say, ah, what is mine is mine. I will not give my tithe. I will not offer anything unto the Lord. That will. No. He came and he wanted to offer up unto the Lord. And he brought an offering. But it wasn't pleasing. It was the good will of God. It wasn't pleasing unto the Lord. Why? In the offering... What is acceptable is only through the blood. You can have a right attitude and you can do the right thing. And then you are frustrated because you try to do this for God. You try to live for God. You try to get out to the word. You try to talk about Jesus and things just not happen. It just, you're just struggling with it and you stay in that place. But if you want to go into the place of the pleasing will of God, you need the Holy Spirit that will tell you, be careful. Sin is around the door. Sin is around the corner. After the God didn't accept the offering from Cain, he didn't reject him. He came and he wanted to bring a rebuke. He, did, he wanted to bring a correction into his life. Be careful not to sin. God said to that man. And sin is watching you. Sin is there to destroy you. And many times Holy Spirit will tell you, the sin is around the corner, he's ready to destroy you. Oh, that lady is there, but ah, 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 ah. You look at her and you, you know in your heart, this is not God. But then immediately you start to reason. But, 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 but
<sighs> look at that lady, look at that guy, or you look in the mirror and you say a lot of stuff. You better look at yourself and see what God is saying over your life. Come on, man, about your value. Don't treat yourself as some cheap whatever, who, the way that they will love me or find affection from me or me affection from them. That will bring value to my life. That's the, the way the world will do it. But be transformed. Just do this. Be transformed. Okay. Come on, man. Yeah. Are you here? Are you still here? The good will of God. So what is pleasing? Take the correction from God and you will know how to come into the pleasing will of God. What is that? Where there's a relationship working. A relationship. I do this out of love because I love my God. This is why I do this. And God is saying, do this, but don't do this. Adjust this, do it this in this way. Transformation, transformation. You will walk in victory. Victory is available for you. The victorious one of heaven and earth is living in you. But that victory in your spirit will mean nothing to you in your soul and in your life on earth. If you don't allow transformation from the Holy Spirit with the word into your walk, into your emotions, into your thought patterns, into your relationships, into your way of dealing with things, in how you do with money, in what you do with your desires and whatever is there. Oh man, walk in triumph, be triumphant, walk in victory. God wants to put you there as a trophy, as a trophy. Perfect will. What is this perfect will? That's the place where you're perfect and you have no sin. <laughs> Unfortunately, there will not be such a day until he comes again. What is then his perfect will? It's in a place where you come to so know his heart. It's not just what is pleasing unto him. I take correction. I know that he treats me as a son. That's why I bring in discipline. I'm in this relationship. But I come into this place. I walk into this place and I just know what my father would say. I just... I'm just, my heart in his heart is so there. You look at somebody and you know God's heart for that person. That is in the place where you walk with God. We spoke about that a hundred times. Walking with God is not cheap. God is with you like the shadow. He will never leave you and never forsake you. But only if you allow transformation in your life, you will have a walk with God. And the man with a walk with God will change the earth. And earth will change because of the man who's walking with God. So God is looking for that man. He's going to wipe out the whole earth. But there's a man who was walking. And he changed the whole world around a man called Noah. Because Noah was walking with God. You know, he was walking with God. And suddenly there's no death. He just walked into heaven. Boom. He didn't die. The word says. There was a man and he walked with God. And his name was Abram. And through him, the nations will be blessed. Right through. That is when you come into the perfect will of God. That where you walk, the environment changes. Because where you walk, you bring kingdom rule. Because where you walk, you bring the presence. Because you, where you walk, you bring the wisdom of God. Where you walk, and you open your mouth, it's the words of God. That's the perfect will of God. That is a man walking with his God. Because in the Garden of Eden, in the perfect world, God called Adam to do what? To walk with him through the garden. To grow beyond the good will of God and struggle with, to do the right thing. Come to know his heart and see and find correction. Take correction so that there can be transformation. Transformation so that more and more you will be victorious. So that you can come into this place of the perfect world. Where you and your father, you and your dad walk together. You and your hero, you and the essence of your life, Jesus Christ, can walk together. Because you respect the Holy Spirit. That takes the word and bring a transformation in you. Triumph through transformation. Next one. But thanks be to God who always, everybody say always, leads us as captives in Christ's triumphal procession. Whoa. And uses us to spread the aroma of the knowledge of him everywhere. Captives, leads us as captives in Christ's triumphal procession. What does it mean? You are controlled by his victory. How do you like that? You're not controlled by the victory that the devils had over our flesh on earth. 
Oh, but somebody will control you. You will be a slave of your sin. You will be a slave of demons. You will be a slave of this world. Or you will be a slave of Christ. The one will set you free for eternity. The one will treat you with respect. A master that treats the slave with respect. The other one wants to destroy you. Whoever. Remember we talked about this slavery, about slave being a slave. Hello? Slave as a curse, but slave as an honor. As a servant. Slave as a servant because you serve the master. And the problem is not being a slave or not a slave. But that you will be a slave of who? Of your own ideas? That's pathetic. But a slave of Christ. The thoughts and the dreams of the master of the universe. Be a slave of him. Be captivated by him. And when you come in worship and you start to worship him, you surrender yourself to be captivated by his beauty, to be captivated by his will, to be captivated by his thoughts out of the context of a wow relationship with God. But that wow only come in the relationship when you learn how to surrender yourself to him, that he can take you, take you. And you say, God, do whatever you want to do with my life. Why? Because you love him. Because you are amazed at what he has done for you. Amen. Thanks be to God who always leads, always, always leads us as captives in Christ. There will always, always be victory when you are in Christ. Because in Christ the victorious one, you are in victory. Victory is in you and you are in victory. And his name is Jesus Christ. Amen. May God help you, may God help me. But triumphal procession, and then, as we know, the Amplified says, leads us as trophies of his victory. That's why we say, only through the cross, when you are crucified with Christ, you will stand as the trophy of his victory. And where God placed you as a trophy of his victory in that faculty at university, there in that school, there at that university, there at that technicon, there where you work, there where you go, God put you as a trophy. Don't you go, get, go into a freak show and try to run away. What trophy did you see that is running away on his own? No, no, no. Surrender yourself. I will not move unless God moves me. That trophy does not get feet and run away. You be the trophy of his victory. You are put there to brag about him. You are put there to brag about him. And when you can show the adoration you have for Christ, if you are, you are wowing about your God, then when you speak, you will not speak in condemnation. You will speak because you have a passion of Christ in you. Jeremiah said, it's like a fire shut up in my bones. If, if there's one shut up, it's not your professional way or your fear saying shut up, you will not speak about Jesus because you're going to lose your friends. Or shut up because you still have a lot of sin in your life. Yes. But still, do you believe he's the victorious one? Do you believe he's the perfect one? Are you in love with him? Do you, the only shut up that will happen in your life is the fire that is shut up. That's a different type of shut up. You all know. In my bones. And I cannot keep my silence. I cannot keep it in anymore. It must come out. <sighs> because you are a trophy. Supposed to brag about his victory when somebody see a trophy they must come close and say what is that trophy all about well, who what are you all about oh you're all about christ and his victory what are you all about oh i see this about god i see that there's a god who loves me this and this i see that through that trophy that trophy is displaying that god has a beautiful life for me that trophy is displaying that god gonna forgive me that trophy is i don't have to be perfect but i must come in his family and be Hello? Trophy? Just say trophy? <laughs> so if you are a trophy, uh, if somebody asks your name, I'm, uh, I'm uh, uh, Peter Trophy Jagabahaya. What's your surname again? Yeah. And your wife is Woman Array. Not mansory. <laughs> what are we saying? What are we saying? Amen. 
You can introduce yourself like that, you know? Okay. I'm Peter Trophy Cornelius van Heiningen. Or whatever your surname is. Piet Trophy Labeskachny. What the freak are you talking about? No, God has called me to be a trophy. What? I'm asking you, try it tomorrow. Go to someone and say, I realized I have a different name also. I'm not just Quis. I'm Quis Trophy. I'm Quis Trophy Kukumur. Okay. Uh, uh, somebody come and do that. Uh, go and do that and give me a WhatsApp. What happens when you say it to somebody? Will somebody do that? Let's see. Let's see. I'm waiting. Okay. So, as a trophy of his victory, you're out there to brag. So the transformation, so that you'll be a trophy of his victory. It's not just for you to be victorious. Because it's not through overcoming all the stuff. Now you're going to go to heaven. No. Because when you gave your life to Christ, you're going to heaven. But now why are you on earth to brag about his victory? So that so many others through your life can stand with you that day before the Lord. And say, because he bragged about your victory, Lord. Thank you that I can be here now. Let it be so for you. Next one. In all things, showing. Let me show off. Showing yourself to be a pattern. Pattern, pattern of good works. In doctrine, showing integrity, reverence incorruptibility, sound speech, etc., etc. You can go on. Showing yourself. You must show yourself. Show yourself. But don't show yourself when you're angry. Don't just show yourself when you have an opinion. Don't show yourself when you are hurt. Don't just show yourself when you have all this other huaras. Show yourself to be a pattern of good works. What is a pattern? It's something that you can follow. How can I do the good works that God has called me to do? Look at Pitt's life. Look at Vipia's life. Look at that guy's life. Look at Celeste's life. Then you will see how you, how somebody must live who is doing the good works of God. They look at your life and say, that is how I can do the work, good works that God has prepared for me. When I look at that person's life. Are you with me? Don't try to be perfect. You will not be. But give yourself. To be a pattern. To be an example. A pattern is when I follow that man, he, he is living the solution. When I become like him. When I'm living it like him. When I'm giving myself like him. He's working himself frack in performance. No, then it's a curse. He's giving himself full out as if unto the Lord. And God blesses him. Not he works and now he has a lot of material things. That's not, nah, that's not what I'm talking about. But people looking at your life and say, that's a good example. That is giving me an answer of how I'm supposed to live. You become like the answer. That is, you become a pattern. Be an answer for many people out there. Are you here? Pattern of good works. Pattern of good works. We had a testimony Friday with a lot of pastors that came together about what happened at Peter Tif. That's a town. And how a lot of turmoil and how in a place of intense turmoil, um, they wanted to burn down the whole town. And at one stage, government actually then, out of desperation, they reached out to the church and said, and they said to the church, we don't have answers anymore. And the church had to rise up. And a lot of churches stopped their nonsense of just fighting one another. You right, I'm wrong. <laughs> And they worked together, they started to pray, and God did amazing work. An amazing work. But we don't know about that in the news, because the new, the, the Korans, what's the Korans, the, the, the newspaper, the newspaper will not tell you necessarily the good uh, testimonies, unfortunately. They're supposed to come to you and say, we don't know anymore, what is the answer? Speak to your God. Speak to your God. Speak to your God. What are you saying? What is God saying? What is God saying from Bluefontein? What is God saying for the school? I don't know what to do. The headmaster come to you as a teacher and say, what, what do you think we must do in our school? Because I know you're serving God. You have respect for him. I know you can hear his voice. You're walking with integrity. You're not lied to me. You will not judge me. But, but 
what is God saying to you about our school? Because you know, I know you have a passion for our school. You have a passion for these kids. You respect the kids. You know that God has a dream for each one of these kids. That's the headmaster speaking to you as a teacher. Oh, because you're a pattern. May God help you. May God help me. Then we are trophies of his victory. Doctrine, integrity, etc. I'm going to the next one. Next one. All scripture, everybody say all scripture. Is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every work. Everybody do this. All scripture is God breathed. All scripture is God breathed. But you know when they say, when they say, oh, you are tired, you cannot listen anymore to any scripture anymore. <laughs> There's some spirit breathing over you. Some demon chamors thing breathing over you, saying, Shh, no, that's boring, that scripture. Hello? Or <laughs> blowing over you, say, oh, look at that lady or that guy. Or, oh, you, they owe you, and you just take the. Nobody will steal chicken. They will only steal ostrich or something like that. But, but bottom line. And that, but with those words, it comes from the breath of some or other spirit. So you decide who will breathe over you. Butman. Cake for your beer man and say Butman. Okay. Oh, okay, ladies, don't say that to one another. Are you here? But the scripture, the word of God, comes from the breath of God. Other words come from the breath of some demon that is blowing over you. Say, frot awesome. What's that in English? I don't know. He's stinking rotten breath over you. Because where there we say, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to do that. Everybody do this. So don't allow them over your life anymore. Amen. Let it be only the breath of God. But in the breath, in the breath, hello, in the breath, in the breath of God, there's the word of God. And through the word of God, with the word of God, through the breath, the Holy Spirit. Hello. It can be useful in everything. It's useful in every facet of your life. Useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Oh boy, teaching is one thing. But unfortunately, when we hear the teaching, when I hear the teaching and I don't respect focus, and I don't respect the Word of God, then what will happen? You will learn how to receive the Word like how Satan will, will present it to you. The way that the devil presented the word to Jesus as a temptation. So the devil, the, the devil will present the word of God to you. With all hope that you will fall in a lot of rubbish. Word of God, very dangerous. So don't you touch the word without the spirit of God. Have respect for the word. Amen. You are still here. God be useful for teaching. So when you receive the teaching, it's for transformation. If you hear the teaching sitting here, and you don't allow Holy Spirit to bring transformation in here, and transformation in there, and transformation in your work, and in your walk, and that you sit here and you say, God, forgive me for that, but help me with that. Yes, remind me of that, and do this. And you're busy with God. That's transformation, because when you hear the word, you allow the Spirit. Because the Spirit will always react on the word, if you allow Him. To do something with the word in you. Transformation to have the victory. That trophy of his victory. But then, if we just struggle with the teaching. Eh, the problem once again, like with the good, pleasing, perfect will of God. The, the, the challenge is when the word is rebuking you. And when you don't hear it. And when you don't hear it. And somebody, God is using somebody or circumstance to rebuke you. Unfortunately, many times circumstances had to be used by God in the lives yeah, of the Israelites in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, you know, a lot of rebuking will come 
through a lot of shaking of heaven and earth. For the church, for the mature child of God, for the child of God that sees their God and that understand, I allow transformation. The bride of Christ in the tribulation time, when heaven and earth will be shaken more and more and more, and the people believe more the most ridiculous rubbish out there, because they are more and more misled, the shaking will bring transformation, and the bride will become beautiful Beautiful, beautiful. God is not coming back for some rubbish, filthy bride fearing in the corner for their lives. He's coming back for a glorious bride that through struggles, through shaking of heaven and earth, through the end time, will be made beautiful through the fire. Through the fire, the gold will become beautiful and the rubbish will be burned away. Let the fire of God become your friend. It's the enemy of your flesh. Rebuking, correcting, correcting. Now I hear I must do this, I mustn't do that. When you hear the correction, you feel, ah, I cannot take this. But when you do it with the Spirit, the Spirit will say, because the Father loves you. Because the Father treats you as a son. That's why. Because God has something better for you. He's correcting you. Because you drive like that, don't, don't drink and drive. Eh? You heard that one. I think so. I hope so. Or you, you're driving, but then you look there and look there. Then sometimes some of you will have a wife. They say, look. Look on the road. Cake will be bad. No, no. They say, Cake will be bad, Giffy. <laughs> they will say it more like that. Okay. So the, me and my wife and the two kids we have now. In the days when they were not for 10 hours on the phone and, um, you know. When you go from here to the Cape, it's a very lonely road for me. Because they are all busy with their own stuff. But earlier, then, okay, we're going to count all the windmills. Is that what it's called? Hmm, windmills. Do you know there's a more than a thousand from here to Cape Town? But then, when I look for the windmill, my wife says, Look in front of you. Oh, look in front of you. You went, Cape for you? Look in the... I'm, I want to go with, play with, you know. So you look like, and then you look like that. You know, you just keep the face to the front. And so, why do I waste your time with that? I don't know. What did I want to say? Oh, correcting. Yeah. Yeah. So don't play the game in the wrong way. Are you with me? Make as if you are going in the direction but your eye but you are actually doing this and you're actually doing that learn from my mistake okay what am i saying you put you fix your eyes on jesus hello is it uh hebrews 12 2 also hey fix your eyes on jesus also perfection of your faith running the race with endurance amen please man when your heart is in the right way it will bring your eyes in the right place in your heart, the compass is in the right direction. Your eyes will go there. But according to your heart, if in your heart there's a lot of compromise, a lot of lust, you can, you can go in that direction, but your eyes are there. Hey, puppy, deal with it. Amen. Correcting and training in righteousness. Training in righteousness. What is training in righteousness? Righteousness is your stature, your right to stand before God. You have a right to go and burn in hell. But through the grace of God, through the blood of Christ, you have the right through the cross, the right to stand before Him through the blood, to stand in His presence, to stand in His word. Christ in you, you in Christ. And your training is so that you will be victorious, triumphant, so that you will be the trophy. That righteousness training to stand as a trophy of His victory. To stand with him there on the podium, Olympic Games, whatever, with him. Hey, but that guy didn't compete. But the man who was the winner, he called him up to stand with him. And he said, let's, let's share this gold medal. Let's share this trophy. I'm calling you to be my trophy. I don't want to have the gold medal. I want you to be my trophy on earth. He went to heaven, sat at, seated at the right hand of the Father. But he said, I want you to be my trophy on earth. Are you here? 
They say, Jesus decided that I will be his trophy here on earth. Okay. Triumph through transformation. Okay, there we go. Next one. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he, Jesus Christ, made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Triumphing over them. Your battle is first in the spirit. You need to be triumphant first in here. The trophy must be visible from here. Okay, when you look at yourself in the mirror there, in that place, in that dark place, you think you are in the negative thoughts and the depression or the this or the compromise or the, all the huara huaras that you think you're somebody. But when, but when you hear the word, especially then, when you hear the word, then your thoughts are all other places. When you look at some round thing with your special team, call it soccer or football, then your focus is there. It's okay. Okay, enjoy it. But more than the focus on that ball, your heart must be able to focus on Him. Say, God help me for that type of lifestyle. For that type of lifestyle. That I will get excited about your word. And excited about you and a life with you. Amen. Triumphing over them by the cross. By the cross. When you... Not die when you frack. I don't know what's the active word of death in English. In Afrikaans, the active word of doodgaan is frack. Um, you have an English word for that? No. Okay. Bottom line. Bottom line. When through the cross, when you understand how demons want to keep you away from understanding the message of the cross, because the message of the cross is the power of God unto salvation, the word says. Not just power on, of, of God unto salvation that you miss hell, but power of salvation for tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow when you can miss it. But tomorrow you're not going to miss it. Uh -uh. Because you're going to be triumphant from here. Why? Today, you're going to build with a word for what is in this week. Because the word is the foundation of the house that you build. Are you with me? So, foundations, uh, building, uh, laying foundations is boring. Building the house with all the this and the windows, and, oh, that's more exciting because you can see a lot of things. In this week, you're going to build some other house with the kids, with, with your studies, with your relationship. You're going to build some other house this week. But what foundations are you laying today? Because tomorrow you can build this palace and that other guy can build this wara wara place, just, just this simple place. But somewhere the storm is going to happen tomorrow afternoon or Saturday or in a month's time and your palace is going to fall and people are going to get hurt with the shaking of that palace. But the other man's simple in his simple house, he's ordinary house gonna stand he's gonna stand he's gonna stand because he had the wisdom to get the word in to one so that he will understand God's will wise builder lay foundations the other one just built but the, the shaking the storm will show the wise builder or the fool the foolish version or the wise version the wise version that today you will be filled with the spirit you will ask Holy Spirit to guide you in this week so that tomorrow, when, when suddenly the bridegroom is rocking up and he's there and you and him can walk into opportunity tomorrow, you are not there because you didn't take the extra oil. You're asleep. It doesn't mean you're lazy, but you're asleep. You're not focusing. You cannot focus where he is because you, you are busy with your own thing. You didn't even realize Jesus, he rocked up, he was there. And he wanted to do it with you, but you didn't see him. You didn't realize. And when you realized, the extra oil was not there. For his virgin. Not seeing the opportunity. Missing the opportunity of tomorrow. No, you will not be that. I will not be that anymore in Jesus' name. Wise virgin, time with the spirit. Wise builder, time with the word. Okay. Next one. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. More. Everybody say more. So hell could say this is unfair. 
is he, unfair. It was Jesus. But Jesus says, you can use my name. I was the perfect one. I took all the blame. I sorted out your mess. You can be triumphant. But be an overcomer for my sake. I do it in the name of Jesus. For Jesus' name's sake. In the name of Jesus, have the victory. For Jesus' name's sake. Because my victory in the name of Jesus is because He is the one. I'm sharing in His victory. I'm more than a conqueror. That's the one that didn't get the victory, but He's sharing in the benefits of the victory of the victorious one, Jesus Christ. That where you are a co heir, a mede erfgenaam. You get the benefits of His victory. How could say that's unfair? Heaven says, because I loved you so much. Because I loved you so much. You can have all the benefits of my victory. Respect the one that brought you the victory. Amen. Focus. Okay. May God help us. Amen. Are you with one another? Only the Spirit of God will work. Is that all? We have the mind of Christ. Amen. When you have the mind of Christ, where is the mind of Christ? In your spirit. So victory, the victorious one, the one that knows what to do with the will of the God, the Father, he's in here. Holy Spirit will tell you that if you know the good will of God and you stop the struggle with that, you get into the place of taking the rebuke from God and change the offering into understanding, okay, this is why my offering as Cain was not acceptable before God, because it had to be a blood offering, for through the blood alone there will be reconciliation with God. Oh, now I understand God's heart. Hello? And you take not just the good, the pleasing, but the perfect will of God, where you and God are walking together. And in that place, in that walking together, is for you, Holy Spirit, to bring the interpretation of what to do with the will of God. You know the will of God, but what are you doing with the will of God? In an accurate response that's called obedience. But obedience is only in the perfect will of God when it's in a relationship. Obedience as a love response in a relationship. They say, obedience as a love response in relationship. Because demons also obey. <laughs> you say, go in the name of Jesus. Boom. Tell them must go. You have authority in his name. Tomorrow you can make the difference that the demonic world could have no impact in this city. Because you can have authority and the demons must obey. But your obedience is a beautiful act in a love relationship with your God. Proper response with respect. Are you with me? You are a trophy. He has called you to be his trophy here on earth. Amen. Oh man, that he wants you to share, to share in his victory, to share in the a beautiful life that he has planned for you from the beginning as a dream in the heart of the Father. Surrender yourself with respect and gratefulness. To his victory. To the life that he has for you. Amen. God come and do this in our lives. We trust you for that Lord. We trust you for that. Forgive us for many times using the word. Without respect. But we will not touch the word. If it's not with your spirit Lord. Let it be with your spirit. Holy Spirit come and open up the word. God that we will not take the information so that demons can manipulate us with the information of the word. But God, we want to respect your word and take it from the heart of the Father that is written for us as his children. Holy Spirit, come and show us practically how does that work. I pray that your hand will be on every man and woman in this place. Holy Spirit, that they will respect your presence, that they will allow your, sp your presence on their lives, Lord, so that they can experience this life. So that they will be set free from the, any demonic, demonic activity in their lives. That the hand of demons will not be on them, but the hands of God. 
in the hands of God alone. I thank you for that, that you come and do that for each one of us through the blood of Christ in Jesus' name. And all say, Amen, Amen, Amen.